If we look at the original scatter plot, we see a moderately strong positive linear relationship. So that points to a linear model being appropriate for describing the relationship between Tooth Fairy Index and the S&P 500. Also, the correlation was about 0.884, which implies a strong positive linear relationship. We can also look at R squared, which tells us that 78.1% of the variation in the S&P 500's value can be explained by the linear model with average tooth fairy gift. So all three of these things point to a linear model being appropriate. There is one red flag though, there's more variation in the S&P 500's value at the lower average tooth fairy gift amounts than at the higher amounts. Now this might just be a result of we don't have enough data, and when more points are added, the variation will look equal throughout the entire domain. But we'll talk about this more in part B. There's five conditions we have to check here. First is linear. Now our original scatter plot appears linear, but the residual plot shows fanning. You can see that the residuals are a lot larger for lower average tooth fairy gift amounts than for the higher ones. This is called fanning and our linear condition is not met. The next is the independent condition. We suspect the values of our variables are not independent. The problem is our data comes from consecutive years and the values of both the S&P 500 and average tooth fairy gift are at least partially dependent on their previous year's value. When times are good, we expect consecutive years of the S&P 500 to be high values. And that's likely what's happening with average tooth fairy gift as well. Next is the normal condition. And what we have is a normal probability plot of the residuals and a histogram of the residuals. And we're checking to see if the residuals are approximately normally distributed. Now the normal probability plot of the residuals is roughly linear. And our histogram is unimodal and roughly symmetric. So this condition might be met. The residuals are approximately normally distributed. So we'll say this condition is met. For the equal variance condition, we want to look at the residual plot and make sure our residuals are about the same amount for the entire domain. So for each price of average tooth fairy gift, do the residuals have about the same spread? Now in our linear condition, we already said there's fanning, so this condition is not met. We can clearly see in the residual plot that we have large residuals for low average tooth fairy gifts and small residuals for high average tooth fairy gifts. This means our model does a better job predicting the S&P 500 for higher average tooth fairy gifts. Our last condition is the random condition. Our data was not produced by a random sample or by a randomized experiment, so this condition is not met. Now a helpful way to remember these conditions is to remember the acronym LINER. That's L-I-N-E-R. Like this video? Check out my book, The Ultimate AP Statistics Practice Book. It's got 100 problems, all with videos just like this. You can pick it up on Amazon.com.